Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, which is going to be very short, we're going to introduce a concept that is incredibly important in higher mathematics. Uh, you'll see this in trigonometry if you take that class, pre-calculus, calculus 1, 2, and 3, and beyond. And it's a, it's a concept that relates to graphing called continuity. Now, the definition you're going to see here is extremely informal. This is nowhere near formal enough to really do a great deal with, but it'll give you an idea of what is meant. So a function is said to be continuous on some interval of its domain if the hand-drawn graph over the interval can be sketched without lifting the pencil from the paper. And you can tell from reading that 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 is truly, truly informal. Um, it doesn't even sound like math but it's a it will give us an idea so we're going to look at just one example the one right here and we're going to explore on which intervals open or closed or otherwise is the function f defined by the graph below continuous quick reminder here the open dots the open circles rather refer to a point on a graph where the graph gets right up to but does not include that point so the point on this graph, 4, 4, is not actually part of the graph. Uh, on the other hand, a closed dot, like that one, indicates that the point is included. So if you imagine drawing this graph, drawing over it perhaps, notice that as I draw this piece of the graph, I never have to lift the pencil. And that point uh, at the end is not included, so I'm just going to stop right there. So on that interval, and we're referring to an interval on the x-axis, the graph would be continuous. What interval is that? Well, we're looking at the interval on the x-axis we're passing over as we draw that graph. And that would go from way out at negative infinity right up to, but not including, that point that value negative one. So we would say that this is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to negative one. But it's also continuous as you draw the second piece, including that point and going on up to and not including that point. What is the interval on the x-axis you're passing over while you draw, draw that piece? And that would be the interval from negative one to four and we would include the negative one because of the solid dot, but not the four because that point is not included. So this graph is continuous on this interval and this interval. Anywhere else? Well, I think you can see the idea now. As I draw the graph from here to here, again, I don't have to lift my pencil. What is the interval I am passing over on the x-axis while I draw that? Well, it would be the interval including that point, which is 4, and continuing on to infinity. So this graph is con or in function is continuous on negative infinity to negative 1, not including negative 1, negative 1 to 4, including negative 1, and then finally also from 4 to infinity, including the 4. Continuous there too. And you might say, well, because all those separate intervals are included, could we just say that this graph is continuous on the entire interval from negative infinity to infinity? That we cannot say, because if you think about how you would draw that graph, if you looked at the entire number line from negative infinity to infinity, you go along like this, and so far you haven't lifted your pencil, but when you get to that point, you have to lift your pencil. And then you continue a little farther, and then you have to lift your pencil again. So we can't say that it's continuous on the entire interval from negative infinity to infinity, but on all these three smaller intervals, we can. Intervals, we can. Hope that helps.